It's the final race of the season. The UYM F1 H2O Grand Prix of Sharjah, with only two men left standing in the title race. Sean Torrente and the sleek might of Team Abu Dhabi versus Jonas Anderson and the scrappy never say die tenacity of Team Sweden. One will taste the thrill of victory, the other suffer the agony of defeat. The battle lines are drawn. The showdown was on Khalid Lagoon, where world champions have been forged for nearly two decades. Sharjah hosting the traditional season finale of the UIM F1H to a world championship since 2004. Sharjah is a unique emirate in the UAE, with a very different feel to the glitz and glamour of neighboring sheikhdoms. While Sharjah is a progressive and modern city with a world-class infrastructure, this is a place that instead puts tradition, heritage and culture in the spotlight. A city that reflects the rich Arabian Islamic influence that has shaped Sharjah, evident in the multifaceted and diverse architectural landmarks that the city has to offer, spanning various cultures and geographies. Sharjah has an intimate relationship to the surrounding environment, from long stretches of sunny, sandy beaches to the haunting beauty of the desert and its unique wildlife just a drive away, all of which hold pride of place in local Sharjah culture. The city boasts parks and museums and such treats as the Al Mahatta Aviation Museum and the Butterfly Sanctuary on Al Noor Island in Khalid Lagoon. This Middle Eastern hub provides the perfect finale for the UIM F1 H2O season, a week-long water celebration in which Aquabike motos were raced along with the UIM F1 H2O and F4 Championship as one of the world's most renowned water festivals came alive in a mix of adrenaline and elegance. Those daring enough also had a chance to take a spin in the F1 H2O two-seater, not for the faint-hearted. Now let's take a look at the drama from the last round. In the previous two rounds in Xiamen, China, Team Sweden's Jonas Andersson's runner-up in the Sen Star Grand Prix of Xiamen in round four shot him to the top of the world standings ahead of defending world champion Sean Torrente of Team Abu Dhabi. With his back against the wall, Torrente knew he had to step up his game, and that's just what he did, taking pole position to lead from the start in the Sen Star Grand Prix of China the following day. The conditions were very rough on Wu Yanbei as the winner from the previous day, Alex Carella, blew over as he tried to pass Torrente. With four yellow flags and half the field unable to complete the race, it was Shiap and Anderson who moved up into second and third positions behind Torrente, both passing Moritz Stromoy. They brought the pressure on Torrente, but the American held his nerve and closed out the win, his second of the year, which shot him back into the lead of the title race. But that third place for Anderson meant he was still very much in the running, just five points behind Torrente, going into the final round in Sharjah. There were 18 drivers from nine teams lined up in Sharjah, but there were only two title contenders left, the latest in a history of epic battles on Khalid Lagoon. Capellini versus Gilman, Price versus Celio, Corella versus Schiap, and now Torrente versus Anderson. The two title protagonists have fought hard to be the last men standing and have dominated the podium places. Torrente with two wins and a third place finish and four Grand Prix. Anderson with one win, one runner-up finish and two third places. Torrente's Team Abu Dhabi is a slick machine with big budgets and testing facilities led by legendary 10-time world champion Guido Capellini. Torrente brought the team the championship last year, and now Torrente had a five-point advantage going into Sharjah, on track for his singular goal of defending his world title. Well, we're here in Sharjah, leading the points just like last year, trying to get our job done, and we'll go for our second championship. Um, last race of the year, so all to play for. Uh, really looking forward to it. It's, it's going to be a heck of a battle with me and Jonas. 
the man who stood between Torrente and the World Championship was from a very contrasting team. Team Sweden, a family affair, a labor of love. <laughs> where Anderson works on his own boats, tunes his own engines, doubles as manager with his wife, who is also his radio person. Jonas Anderson has never won a world title in 14 years on the tour, and this was as close as he'd ever come to a shot at becoming world champion. But the odds were stacked against him. He had to finish the race in first place with at least one boat between him and Torrente. Yeah, for sure, this weekend we have some pressure. We can win the championship, and it has never happened before, so... But I have nothing to lose. Try to make uh, a clean race and uh, have some luck to, to finish with uh, the engine in one piece. Leading the chasing field is Maritz Stromoy of Emirates Racing. She won her maiden Grand Prix in Sharjah 2015 and has been in brilliant form all year in her quest for a first ever year-end World Championship podium finish. Before this, I finished twice on fourth position and being on the top of the podium. And the overall ranking is, uh, would be a huge step and it's what everyone at home uh, is expecting me <laughs> to come home with a medal. We know that it won't be silver or gold, but if we can get a bronze, uh, I will be very happy. Sharjah team will be looking to post good results in home waters for the 20th year anniversary, led by two-time world champion Sami Selio of Finland, racing alongside his countryman Philip Roms. 20th time here in Sharjah is, is big time for us now. Especially now, after all these years, we became as the Sharjah team. So all the fans and supporters around us is here. Everybody's focusing, they're watching the Sharjah team. Let's see what's happened there, but we will push for the win. Me and Philip, we try everything what we can for to be fast for the Sharjah. But waiting to throw a wrench in the championship contenders' plans are a formidable cast of former Sharjah winners and world champions who want to finish the year on top of the podium. Three-time world champion Philip Schiap of CTICF1 Shenzhen, China. Four-time world champion Alex Carella of Maverick F1. Eric Stark of Victory Team. And Daniel Kamzi, Torrente's Team Abu Dhabi teammate and fourth going into Sharjah. The Sharjah circuit is famously challenging. Sticky water conditions, waves reverberating off the lagoon walls, and the glare of the late afternoon sun streaming through the buildings and combining with the spray. Also back on the circuit is the notorious yellow right-hander, which was omitted last year. The Rebellion official qualifying would be crucial as drivers fight it out over three sessions to determine the all-important starting lineup. The 18 drivers in Q1 reduced to 12 in Q2, where the fastest six would lock horns in a Q2 shootout to determine pole position. Last year's world runner-up Eric Stark of Victory Team was back in form, setting the fastest times in practice, followed by the quickest lap in Q1. His teammate David Del Pin, however, was unable to progress to Q2. Maverick F1 team principal Cedric Deguin was out with technical issues, but his teammate Alex Carella made it through in ninth. F1 Atlantic drivers Duarte Benevente and Alberto Comparato were both off the pace out in Q1, while Sharjah team's Philip Roms, who did well last year, was also unable to move up, finishing in 16. Just scraping through in the final seconds was Emirates Racing's Bartek Marshalek in 12th, bumping out Greg Foster of Blaze Performance. In Q2, the quickest of the 12 remaining drivers were CTICF1 Shenzhen's Philip Schiap and again Eric Stark. Schiap's CTIC teammate Peter Marin had a tougher time of it, unable to crack the top six, finishing eighth. Blaze Performance veteran and 12-time Grand Prix winner Francesco Cantando was also out in Q2, and Alex Corella unable to find the pace, languishing in 12th at the end of the session. With Jonas Anderson laying a good time to secure a Q3 spot, the pressure was on for Sean Torrente as he went all out to stay near his rival. He was able to bump Moritz Stromoy out for a crucial top six spot, Stromoy ending in seventh, her teammate Marshalek also out of the running in ninth. Q3, the last six, the battle for pole, Sean Torrente out first with two laps and the course to himself to lay a fastest time. 46.25 is the time to beat, but will it be enough? My first lap, it was just a little too shabby. I, it's not going to be good enough, but it was a decent lap. But second lap was absolutely perfect until I got to the yellow. I tried to go for a home run. I should have just hit a double, and I was good. So we'll see what we got. We're in the top six, so we're ready to fight tomorrow. 
Torrente's teammate, Daniel Kamzi, goes hard and beats Torrente's time with a 45.47 lap time that hands the Abu Dhabi veteran provisional pole. Sharjah team hope. <laughs> rest on Sami Celio, but he's unable to beat either Torrente or al Kamzi with a 46.47 time. Jonas Anderson sees his chance. He knows Torrente's time isn't great, and he wants to put a couple of boats between him and Torrente on the start pontoon. It's pure perfection from Anderson. What a lap, what a time, 45.26. He's ahead of Torrente, but there's still two drivers left. Yeah, I don't know if it's enough, but I'm before Sean and that's important. One of the fastest men so far has been Eric Stark, the defending Sharjah Grand Prix and pole position champion. He has nothing to lose and he's fast, 45.45, but not fast enough. Anderson breathes a sigh of relief as a second driver slips in between him and Torrente. One man left, Philip Schiap, a pole position master, officially the fastest man on tour. Anderson watches on nervously, what a lap from Shiap, 45.31, it is five hundredths of a second short. Yeah! Anderson takes pole position and crucially puts three boats between him and Torrente. This is a dream start to Anderson's hopes for a first ever world title. For Torrente, it's going to be a nerve-wracking affair. The American having three places to make up in the race. Alkamzi, Stark and Shiap if he's to hold on to that slim five-point lead in the world standings and defend his world title. I feel fantastic. This morning in the practice, I, I didn't feel good. The setup was not good on the boat and I didn't drive good. And uh, now we work the whole uh, day. The guys have not even get the dinner and now it's coming, it's coming more, so, I mean, it's uh, the chance of my life, so, we're going to take it. <laughs> the UIM F1H2O family was treated to a traditional Arabian feast in the desert, where they had a chance to unwind and enjoy Sharjah's incredible hospitality. Crowds lined the lagoon in their thousands for the final race of the season. Philip Schiap in P2 would hold a critical position in the world title. I hope for the good race because for me the problem is uh, Jonas, it's my friend, it's on the pole position, I don't want to destroy the championship for him, but for sure uh, I make, uh, I do my best for the, for win the race. Also holding a crucial role are last year's world runner-up Eric Stark of Victory Team and Daniel Kamzi who start between Anderson and Torrente. It's a big moment for Anderson, his first shot at a world title in his 14-year career, but he has to hold off six former Sharjah Grand Prix winners and three world champions right behind him. No easy task for any driver. The starting grid, Anderson with pole, with five points to make up with Torrente in the standings, knowing he'll have to put at least a boat between him and the American. Celio starts in 6th, Stromoy is in 7th, then it's Morin in P8, Marcelek P9, and Anderson's teammate Eric Eden in P10, followed by Cantando, followed by four-time world champion Corella in P12. The final minutes, nerves are taut, the tension is palpable, almost complete silence on the starting pontoon as the teams and drivers await the start. The lights go out, the race is on. Great start from Jonas Anderson. The Swedes surging ahead on the opening straightaway to the commitment buoy. Eric Stark in trouble. He gets bumped on the right sponson by Daniel Kamzi, who crosses Stark's race line. Stark recovers, but he loses precious time. Right up there with Anderson is Philip Schiap. Torrente also making a great start as that collision between Al Kamzi and Stark helps push him up neck and neck with Al Kamzi. Back in the field, Philip Roms of home team Sharjah is getting passed by American Greg Foster of Blaze Performance, who's also off to a great start, moving up from 18th to 14th right off the bat. 
Emirates racing driver Bartek Marshalek is in ninth, fighting Peter Marin of CTIC for eighth position. Marshalek finds the clear water to pick up speed and pass Marin on the outside as the Polish ace locks eighth. <laughs> Position. Anderson is in the race of his life, opening up a nice gap with Schiap in second, hoping Schiap and Alkamzi can hold off the hard-charging Torrente. Torrente makes a move on Alkamzi. He swings around on the outside, trying to find a way around his teammate, but Alkamzi holds firm. Himself a multiple Grand Prix winner in Sharjah, who knows this circuit well. Torrente in the number one boat, cuts inside on the straightaway. Alkamzi on the outside. Torrente moves up, they are dead even. Torrente hugging those turns tight, holding on to that inside lane, not letting Alcamzi pass. Just one lap into this 45 lap race and Torrente has already moved up two positions from fifth to third, great start. As Anderson gets into a groove in the lead, Schiap now holds the key to this race. If Torrente were to overhaul Schiap and Anderson win the race, Torrente would retain his world title on countback. While the two would have two wins apiece this year, Torrente's two runner-up finishes to Anderson's one would seal the title for the American. Further back, Moritz Stromoy, who is poised for a first-ever year-end podium, has maintained seventh position, and she's on target for the third step of the podium now. Marshalek right behind his teammate Moritz Stromoy, behind him Peter Marin, but Marin now finds Francesco Cantando coming up from behind to challenge the Frenchman who was sixth in the standings going into Sharjah. Eric Eden lost two positions at the start, dropping back to 12th, and he gets hit by Greg Foster on the inside lane as they come around the yellow right-hander, which leaves the young Swede limping on the circuit. Eric Stark also succumbs after that bump with Alcanzi at the start. Last year's world runner-up closes the season. Then I had a very bad start, you know, Tani was very, very bad. I was cutting my lane directly, so I almost blow over, and then I was after. So. Daniel Kamzi would later be disqualified for cutting Stark's lane. Meanwhile, Francesco Cantando has bumped Morin down a spot to ninth, while both drivers are chased by Alex Corella in 10th. But Corella loses control. He spins and rolls. Corella's boat badly damaged. His race is over, but at least he lands right side up and is unhurt. That would be a yellow flag. I, I lose a lead on the right corner, I try to take it back and I ball a roll and finito. All the work Anderson put into opening a gap is gone and now the Swede has to try and hold off an attack by Schiap and more importantly hope that Schiap can hold off Torrente who surely senses an opportunity now. The green flag is up, the race resumes, Alcamzi in fourth, blinded by light and spray. No problems for Anderson, he maintains his lead, and Schiap holds off Torrente, but the gaps have narrowed between the three drivers. Great restart by Sami Celio, the Sharjah team ace moving up into fourth, overhauling Alcamzi, who also has to fend off Moritz Stromoy coming from behind on the inside. Stromoy makes a mistake, she gets some air under her, and that's all Alcamzi needs to slip past her. Alcamzi is in fifth. Stromoy's mistake proves costly as she's then passed by fast-moving Bartek Marshalek who passes his teammate bumping her down a spot. Even Cantando gets past her briefly before she recovers and gets back on track. She knows that she needs to finish near Alkamzi otherwise she might lose the year-end podium spot to him. No change at the top, Anderson with a comfortable lead, safe in first for now, Schiap second, Torrente third, knowing unless he can pass Schiap, Anderson will snatch the world title away from him. By the 12th lap, Marcelek goes from strength to strength, having a great race as he pushes on Alcamzi in fifth. But just when Anderson rebuilds a gap over Schiap, the yellow flag comes up yet again as Contando takes out a buoy, possibly blinded by the sun and spray on the corner. Both Blaze Performance boats are back on the pontoon. Their races are over. The end to a dismal year for Contando, who was unable to finish a single race in 2019. Uh, I dislodged two boa, so I'm disqualified for sure. This sun today is really bad. You cannot see nothing. So, unfortunately, out from the spray, I was in the middle of the turns. Nothing to do. The second restart of the race coming up. Torrente once again sees a chance to take Schiap. Also, enormous pressure on Anderson. Can he hold his lead? The green flag is up. 
Anderson holds on to his lead. Further back, it's Mayhem as Sammy Celio and Tiny Alcamzi nearly collide. Bartek Marshalek escaping the confusion. Marit Stromoy has snuck through on the inside, coming fast around that corner, and she slips her way past Celio, Alcamzi, and her teammate Marshalek to move up into fourth. <laughs> with Marshalek right behind her. Alkamzi now in seventh, locks horns with Celio, taking on the Sharjah team, two-time world champion driver. Alkamzi does it in the right-hander, cutting through ahead of Celio. Alkamzi up in sixth now, with Celio giving chase to the Team Abu Dhabi veteran. The big winner on the second restart was Moritz Stromoy. She saw her opportunity well, took advantage, and seized fourth spot. But then Stromoy grinds to a halt. There's something wrong as she's passed by Marshalek. And then the rest of the field, the boat just dead in the water. Yeah, the engine ceased. Oh, broken engine. But now I'm just hoping for, uh, if things stay the same, I'm still third in the championship. So that's what I will go for now. With just 13 laps left, Anderson's fate is virtually in Schiap's hands. The Frenchman, the only thing standing between the world title hopes of both Anderson and Torrente. But with the reduced field, passing will prove more difficult for Torrente. Anderson knows he's very close to his dream coming true. Torrente, on the other hand, must sense that his chances are dwindling fast if he's to defend his world title. It all hinges on Shiap. He is the kingmaker as three seconds separate each driver from the next. Marshalek in fourth, then Alcamzi fifth and Celio sixth. A ninth boat is out of the race. This time it's Duarte Benevente of F1 Atlantic. Half the field is out of the race now with about 10 laps left. Marshalek is on target for a best ever race finish in fourth with maybe even a shot at the podium as he sets the fastest lap time out there and no back markers to hamper him. With just five laps left, Torrente still doggedly pursuing Shiap. What a gap Anderson has opened there. He's done everything he needed to do today, overcoming the nerves and the pressure from champion drivers. This small team going up against juggernauts like Abu Dhabi and CTIC is just one lap away from glory after 14 years on the UIM F1 H2O Tour. But then Shia breaks down with just three pins to go. Torrente moves past the limping CTIC boat and Torrente comes through in second to take the world championship. What a cruel blow for Team Sweden. What a twist of fate for Anderson. Torrente and Team Abu Dhabi celebrate an incredible world title defense that literally came down to the last lap while Jonas Anderson slumps over in defeat despite having just won the race. The world title was within his grasp and it was snatched away. Best ever result for Bartek Marszalek on the podium for the first time, a well-deserved third place for the Polish driver. Anderson did everything he needed to do and he did it well with limited resources and crew to bring himself and his team to where they are now and it is an incredible achievement. Just nine boats finishing the race, Celio finishes fifth for the local team, Schiap drops down to sixth after being in second for 44 and a half laps. Comparato manages to finish in seventh, Del Pin eighth, De Guin completes the race in ninth. Torrente on top of the world, now a two-time back-to-back world champion. In the team standings, it's Team Abu Dhabi once again retaining the world team title comfortably with 106 points. Team Sweden, a world runner-up on 89 points and Emirates Racing finished third. I start from nine spots, so so podium was unexpected at the beginning, but the boat was great, and then oh, finally, you know, it's my place. I deserve it, so I, I promise this is not the last time. No, I mean I, I did what I have to do. We took the pool and we win from pool, and uh, in the last lap, Philip broke. It's, it's a shame it would be nice with a world championship, but it is what it is. So yeah, sure, I'm very disappointed. 
Anderson and Torrente complete the year on equal 79 points. Torrente wins the UIM F1H2O title on countback. Stromoy just manages to hold on for a career best season end result in third. Alcanzi fourth, Marshallek finishes fifth, then Corella sixth. Yeah, it feels great to be uh, third in the championship. Unluckily, I couldn't finish today. Boat was fast and uh, I had the pace to actually be on the podium, but uh, in the end... Engine is broken, really broken, so... Uh, but finishing third in the world in Formula One is, is a dream country, so yeah. I just pushed like crazy, and I, I, once I was in third, I knew I was in striking distance. I just kept putting the pressure on, putting the pressure on, and finally the seven broke, and man, I saw it with a lap to go. I couldn't believe it, and my radio man's going crazy. I'm trying to hold it together for one more lap, and uh, I couldn't believe it, man. It was awesome. I'm so thankful for these guys um, and everything they do for me. Um, we just fight to the end. Today was exactly who we are. We just fight and fight and fight and fight until, until we get what we need. The end of a brilliant 2019 UIM F1H2O World Powerboat Championship was celebrated with a traditional closing feast in the Arabian Desert. That brings to an end another decade of racing. See you in 2020.